Oh boy, the Shyamalan strikes back. <laughs> I just... Hey everyone, this is The Movie Man. Another out of theater reaction, this time for Trap, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. And yes, if that name is in the picture, you know it's going to be some foolishness. I understand we started off pretty solid with The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, and Signs, but lordy, lordy, things have gone downhill. I thankfully did not have to be subjected to The Last Airbender, but I feel like that was kind of the final blow and everything since has... Uh, <laughs> it's been... Uh, I don't even have the words. I still remember seeing old and being so excited for that and thinking like, okay, maybe Shyamalan is getting back on track. No, no, no. And my thing is, I think at this point, you have to know what you're getting with M. Night Shyamalan and maybe you can enjoy it can i not really <laughs> so yeah <laughs> there's so many things to say but i will simply start by saying that josh hartnett especially as someone who of course grew up in the early 2000s and just seeing his rise to fame and so many of those films and just that experience of teen films during that time and i have to say that this film was his like Looking at this purely as a vehicle for his acting talent, it definitely succeeds. I'm telling you, he was carrying this film on his back. He was the best part of it. He was the most compelling part of it. I will also say that I was pleasantly surprised to see Haley Mills, who was the star of Pollyanna and the original Parent Trap, like the OG Parent Trap. I, I was like, I recognize this woman's face, but it is bugging me. I can't, I'm trying to figure out why. I looked it up and I was like, wow. So I will say I was appreciative of that as well as someone who grew up watching those two films, especially The Parent Trap and, you know, Let's Get Together and all of that. So I actually thought that was really awesome seeing her here. Everything else, I just think they said, OK, let's just <laughs> let's just make stuff up as we're going along, because I yeah, I think when everything is centered around the concert, especially if you're familiar with the premise of it, I think that is interesting in a way. I'll also say the concept is cool if you can get past how nonsensical and inane it is, which it really is that. <laughs> it definitely is. The entire thing is extremely predictable, let me say that. But at least there, it's like you have one location, which I usually love films with that setting or that setup, I should say. So seeing that, I think, was definitely interesting. A cat and mouse game, so to speak. I was here for that, but then... There's a point where the rest of the film devolves into something completely different. And I was just like, what is going on? <laughs> it's kind of like Red Eye. If you guys have seen Red Eye, the film with Rachel McAdams and Killian Murphy, it's like the first half of that film that takes place on the plane is like, whoa. Because it's like, how do you deal with this heightened tension-filled situation on a plane? How do you escape? How do you get away? But then the rest of the film is just this continuous chase sequence. And it's like, why? <laughs> and it's nowhere near as compelling or as interesting as you thought as far as what you were going to get going into the film. Just seeing the trajectory of the story was something I thought was going to be really, really compelling. And it is to an extent, even with the predictable nature of how everything progresses. But then, of course, we have to lean like completely <laughs> into the conveniences and the contrivances and to an extent even those things I can try to let go of some of it but it gets to be a bit much and I think that in the end this isn't the worst of M. Night Shyamalan's movies but I am still very confused <laughs> as to what he's doing in the lane of film it's just very bizarre and it's very strange and I'm lost I will also say that a really sore spot for me <laughs> was, well, let's just put it this way. Clearly nepotism is alive and well because M. Night Shyamalan not only had one of his daughters directing The Watchers, but then now he also has another one of his daughters who is starring in this film. I didn't think anything of it at first, but then towards the end, there was a particular character that had some very questionable acting. And I was just kind of like, you know, I, and I try not to go too hard on the acting, but it just was not great. And then I look 
you know, the end credits, and lo and behold, it's another one of his daughters. Her name is actually Salika, and what I will give her is that she can definitely sing. And I remember thinking, like, I wouldn't mind looking up some of her tracks because, yeah, like, the bops were bopping in this, but acting-wise, it wasn't quite given what it was supposed to. So I was just like, look, I mean, get in where you fit in, make it work if you can, but I just... Between the watches and this, I don't know how that's gonna pan out. Good luck to them. <laughs> I wish them the best. But as far as this film, the Shyamalan family, be blessed. <laughs> that's all I can say. As far as the experience, I just, kudos to Josh Hartnett. <laughs> that's all I got.